Good evening, everybody. Before we get started tonight, I'm going to go into a little bit of how how you want to, well, how I maximize my time. Quite often, we'll do a scanning session, or we'll go through a session like we do on a Monday or Thursday night, and we'll have 20 or 30 good charts. And a lot of people will private message me or even ask, say, how the heck do you find the best ones if you've got, how do you narrow it down? You only need one or two maybe. you got 20 or 30 good ones. How do we narrow it down? And then the other problem people have is say, man, there's so many good signals and patterns. How do we remember all this? Or, so here's two aspects that we're going to look at tonight. One, we're going to be looking at the at the concept of if candlestick signals are created by the expectations of what's going to come next based upon a candlestick signal or pattern, then we basically just want to put our simple logic into incorporating these signals and patterns that are going to be the ones that are going to produce the biggest uh, profits for us, or the biggest potential profits. So all boats are going to rise in a rising tide. What we're looking for are those boats that are going to skyrocket during that rising tide. So essentially, we can be looking for things that we are visually prepared for to get us set up to knowing that a big price move is about to come. Now, a lot of that will involve looking at something that most people say, man, I don't want to be chasing after that. Whereas if we know what to expect after a signal or a gap up or a, a pattern breakout, we don't have to be hesitant about saying, oh, man, I'm, I'm afraid to be chasing this. But we know what we should be expecting after that. So this is kind of a prelude to the uh, uh, what is the best website or scanning charts for candlestick signals for traditional chart patterns. Uh, DMAX, uh, I use Metastock and I use TC2000. I use TC2000 because I started using that way back in 2000, 2001, when I lived in Houston, and Trade Station was coming to town to show their stuff. TC 2000 was there also, and back then you didn't have the what do they call it? The the uh, the T not the T line the uh, whatever the high tech line is um, still on phone, and so. One of the guys got a trade station software, and he said, I'm downloading it now. This was in the afternoon. Come by at 7, and we'll all take a look at it. Well, we got there at 7, and it was still downloading. And at 9 o'clock, it was still downloading. And so uh, back, back then, uh, TC2000 was there, downloaded it, and downloaded it in two or three minutes. So that... That's what I use. Um, we're going to be going through a, a full day training this weekend. And basically through the years, I've discovered there's about 12, I'm sorry, 18 very strong signals and patterns. And these are the ones that if you see them, you've got three benefits. One, you probably hit something that is definitely going to be in the right direction. Two, it's going to be in the right direction with a much stronger magnitude move than most other uh, uh, uptrending price moves. And three, like today, the ones that were in strong patterns or strong uh, buy setup, setups weren't affected very much by the down downdraft in the markets. So those are the reasons why 
when I am scanning and I find 30 good stock charts, I can go back and cultivate which ones I know are the best. They're all, they all may be good, but I'm trying to pick the best. I want to use, maximize my effort or my time and effort to find the trades that are going to produce the most uh, profits for me. Now, there's 18 of these signals and patterns. And people are still coming out of a, these sessions saying, uh, oh, man, there's so much. How do I learn? I tell people all you have to do is sit back and look or watch as we go through step by step how to utilize each signal and pattern, where to enter, where to stay long, where to come back out. And so I tell people, find the ones that you can see that make a lot of sense to you, that, that kind of strike you as being something you could recognize. And pick out three or four of those out of the 18. And then become an expert at them. Know exactly where you should be entering, what you should expect, what the uptrend should do, where you should get out, where you might take half profit, profits, um, that type of thing. So once you become an expert and know exactly what that price pattern is supposed to do, now you're not at the mercy of the market or having to wait for other people's recommendations or suggestions. You, you basically are trading, uh, you've got control of your own trading. Now this is all using very logical information from the Japanese rice traders. Just simple observations. Where do most people buy? Where do most people sell? We can recognize that. We know the simple confirming indicators. And if you make it as simplistic as possible, if we know that the uh, the T line is one of our strong indicators, and if the Japanese you use the Japanese race traders logic, uh, you look for the buy signals in the oversold area. You would look for the confirmation and see whether it stays above the T line. Um, was that pick four, pick four patterns, Joseph? You want to pick four trade setups. Uh, it might be the best friend signal. It might be the kicker signal. Uh, can't think. Fry pan bottom breakout and one more. Uh, the left right combo. And just become an expert at those four indicators or those four signals. And I can pretty much guarantee you that if you just pick out four that you want to become very adept at, you'll always have more trades than you'll ever be able to handle, which puts you in a position of once you find the signals and patterns that you recognize and know how to use them, then you can start cultivating which one of those that you recognize very well become your best uh, setups. You always have, have the uh, opportunity to pick out the very best trades. So if we're looking for bullish signals and patterns, we're looking for things that tell us we've got an obvious, not only uptrend, but a very strong uptrend. Like your signal followed by a gap up or your kicker signal. We know what the results of these should be. Would you say it's best to analyze on the 4H greater than 1H trade on the M15? Uh, Rayson, I have no idea what that means. I don't know what a H4 or an H1 is. So when we hit, when we know something like a kicker signal, which is your strongest individual signal, candlestick signal. We know what the results are. How do you differentiate your best friend with the kicker signal? Because a kicker signal is a big down day, and the next day they open up positive and go the opposite direction. A best friend signal is a doji followed by a gap up. 
Uh, you can use uh, race and you can use whatever time frame you want to. Um, I usually watch the 10 minute chart. Uh, use whatever system you want to. Again, you can apply whatever trading system or whoever you're following. But if you overlay their recommendations or what you're doing with candlesticks and know what the signals tell you, it's going to enhance your ability to analyze the correct trades at the correct time dramatically better. Quick comment on the left right comment. Are you waiting for me to make a quick comment or are you going to make a quick comment? Me. Okay. I'll wait to see if I can find a left right combo. Which we will uh, once we get down here, which won't, won't be too long. I'll go to some of the other. We'll go to live charts. So a kicker signal is a big down day, and then you gap it up and go the opposite direction. This is your expected result. So here's kind of the credibility of candlestick signals and patterns. Look at our bobble breakout, a J-hook pattern where you can see distinctly at a resistance level and it goes through that resistance level. We know what we should be expecting in wave three, the same magnitude as here. So why is that? Credible, because look what it did today. Markets down, whatever it was, 200, 300, 350 points. NASDAQ off 250. And our pattern was still working. So that's the third aspect to going with the signals and patterns, the strong ones. Because even when the market is selling off, the, the magnitude of force that was creating that signal or pattern in the first place, still will hang around for a while, giving you maybe an extra day or two but if things are really turning over to get, get you out without uh, having to sell out as it's, it's dumping. The left-right combo is the same as the, uh, oh, yeah, Jim put the description up of the left-right combo. Uh, Go had a big left-right combo yesterday. All right, well, remind me when we get to live charts. So anytime I see a, a pattern set up, I know my probabilities are strong of knowing what to do at the breakout level and what the expectation is from that level. Uh, I don't know what, uh, you know, which one that is. So here's what we can identify. If we know our signals and then we see a gap up, what do we essentially have? Wave one, wave two, kind of in a wedge formation, wave three. Notice what this one did today, breaking out into wave, or with that little gap up breakout. It was still trading strong, even with the market selling off. So this is the reason I stick with the signals and patterns, is because if things go against me, I've usually got a little bit more oomph in those price moves to keep me or let me get out of that position at a little bit better price than something that was selling off. Is pattern better than signal or it depends? Yes, Tim. Uh, uh, and that's what we'll be working on this weekend is it's sometimes the combination of the signals and the pattern together that uh, uh, provides a much more clear uh, analysis of what the next uh, pattern is going to be. And just real quick, let's say, let's say you're setting up, you've had a strong price move, it pulls back, then you have a doji followed by a gap up, your best friend's signal starting wave three of a J-hook pattern. So you, you can identify the pattern with a lot more clarity. So if I see something like this, this is just simple logic. If you see a candlestick reversal signal, and a gap up. What's that tell us? Well, we know the reversal signal tells us there's a change of investor sentiment. The gap up tells us not only have they changed investor sentiment, but they're now ready to go the opposite direction with great force. If I can see this 
kind of a rounding bottom, and they're gapping up. What's that tell me about the bullish force? I want to keep watching this one to be buying on strength. What is the difference between a left-right combo and engulfing? Read the uh, descriptions, uh, Sarash, just up uh, above what Jim did in pink. But it's a, a bullish engulfing and engulfs a, uh, the previous day. A left-right combo engulfs the previous day, which the previous day was a doji. So anytime you see a doji in a combination pattern, it's going to usually be a much stronger uh, reversal indication. So because we know what should happen coming out of a pattern, we can be prepared to be buying when we can see a pattern confirming. What do you think everybody and their brother was watching on this one? They're watching to see if it's going to get through the 200. What can we see setting up going up to the 200, a fry pan bottom? Uh, Dustin, it might just be you sometimes, uh, yeah, go up to the top right where there's a circle X, click on it, and then that'll uh, log you out, log back in, and hopefully you get a better connection. Do you have any personal favorites? Uh, Pat, I, on Saturday, we're going to go through not only the 18, in detail, but then at the end, we're going to shift it right around and we're going to do all 18 all over real quick, but we're going to do them in order and the quantified what I consider the strongest down to the weakest. Now, I want to, to clarify the weakest is not weak. It's just putting the 18 best setups in a quantitative uh, value. And I can pretty much say that anytime I see a best friend signal, I'm going after it or looking into it immediately. If I see a kicker signal, I'm going after it uh, pretty, uh, pretty fast immediately. But then I'm also looking for these situations because I know what will happen. Oops, I lost my cursor. If this opens, if this closed right here, I'm already prepared. If it opens positive, I'm buying because I know the probabilities are it's going higher. Now, why would it go a lot higher on the breakout? Because we're buying it on the basis that it's confirming the fry pan bottom breaking out through the 200. Everybody else is jumping in when they see that it's confirming that it's breaking through the 200. Um, so anyways, we're going to go through each... Uh, each one in detail, where you get in, how you identify it setting up, because it's not only important to see when it's happening, it's more important to see when it's about to happen. And that's what we're going to be working on. So if we know what happens with a signal or a pattern breakout or a signal gap down as well as gap ups, that just puts us in a lot more favorable uh, analysis of knowing what should happen based upon that signal. That gets rid of two, two major emotional factors. One, a lot of people say, oh man, this has already moved up. I don't want to chase after it. Well, you want to chase after it if you know that it's confirming a signal that is going to produce a lot more upside. And then it gets rid of that bad habit that most people have that when it moves up and it's a nice chart, and they, I hear so many people say, ah, I'm going to wait for it to pull back so I can get in at a better price. There's two flaws to that analysis. One, if it's breaking out, showing that the bulls are in control, what's the last thing you want to see happen? You don't want to see it pull back because that tells you there's not a lot of bullish force there. And number two, it's deluding yourself that you're an immaculate execution uh, whatever 
But as soon as it pulls back to a level that you buy, that as soon as you buy, it's going to turn right around and head back up. That's wishful thinking. If I see something that is doing what I expect it to be doing, I'm not waiting for it to come back up where I can short it at a better price. I'm doing the trade immediately. We're in positions that were bought because of very simple, strong indicators. There's your best friend gap up. This is what we call convergence analysis, or two plus two. The fact that you have a doji sitting right smack dab on the 50, they gap it up. Your best friend signal off the 50 through the T-line and break this level right here. How far up was this going to go? Up here or here? What's our analysis at that point? We just use the T-line analysis. We stay long until we see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line. And it just allows you to make very logical assumptions. Harmony gold stock. Here's your best friend signal, breakout. How long do you stay in this one? Until you see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line. And what is the uh, uh, rhetorical question? What keeps you in this position? It never closes below the T-line. Somebody in the options room today was saying, oh, I'm so nervous about such and such. And I had to come in and say, you don't need to be nervous. If you've got a buy signal and it's staying above the D-line, you just relax with it. I think that was on ADAP. All right, so what we're going to try to do this weekend is, again, put the common sense logic. Who spelt that? Find the visually easy to identify strong signals. Use our scans to find them. And basically, we're using the most consistent uh, reoccurring indicator in the world, and that's human nature. So this this session is uh, longer. It's a little bit more expensive, but there's a heck of a lot more information in it. And I'll even go as far as if you need some financing, just get with uh, Abe and see if he can break it up over two or three payments if, if you're really interested. But this is this session. The reason we, uh, or I like putting on this session is because not only does this show you the common sense of where a reversal is happening with strength, I guess I said that all in too long a sentence, not only does it show you where there's a reversal occurring with a high degree of probability, but a very strong reversal is going to give you a lot of strength. Uh, Julo, these are daily charts, but Candlesticks works on any uh, uh, candlesticks work on any uh, time frame. I trade soybeans off the 10 minute chart. I trade the dollar off the 10 minute, 30 minute chart. You use if you just know the definition of a candlestick signal, it is the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. Doesn't matter whether it's a one minute chart or a monthly chart, all depending on your your time frame. I use the dailies just because they're uh, uh, they they do the same patterns. So this is what this weekend is for: is to take the information that we know that is built into candlestick logic and making them the strong uh, signals and patterns. And then Becky's got the. So if you do need. Uh, uh, this is the um, non-members price. Members price is three ninety-seven. If you enter, if I understand you correctly, the signal says pay attention, and the pattern says continuation of an impossible target. Yes, or the signal is kind of the component of the pattern that improves the probabilities of that pattern performing. All right, I'm going to go back here real quick just to make sure I got uh, this software. Bernard is uh, oh, the software I use for illustrating is CQG, which is the grandfather of charting services. Um, 
but I don't recommend it because it's like $1,300 or $1,300 a month. You get just as good charting on Metastock, uh, CCNet, and most uh, brokerage platforms now have good charting. Uh, did Hubert write that? Vicki Hubert write what? Okay. Whoops, I didn't scroll down fast enough. Sound echoing. Jim, make sure you're not logged on twice. I'm going up, PK. Doesn't look like you're logged on twice. Did rice traders have patterns or just no? They had patterns. They had the fry pan bottom. Uh, I forget what they call the J hook, but I renamed the J hook for something easier to understand. Uh, they had the belt hold signal. Belt belt hold signal. They described as two wrestlers, sumo wrestlers fighting. One's trying to back out of the ring, the other one grabs his belt and pulls him back in, and they're back to fighting. Oh, that's, uh, uh, that's my lawn mower guy out there. How did the rice traders know? They didn't. This is one of the advantages we have. They were still looking at things based upon where was it in a trend. Uh, let me make this smaller, Jim. I know that, Alex. I'm guessing it was white rice. But everything they mentioned are in terms of bags of rice. They say if you have four, and again, you got to remember, the Japanese rice traders that developed candlesticks did not become wealthy. They became legendarily wealthy. They were the financial powerhouse in Japan for centuries. And they got that way because they didn't follow the price of fundamentals or the price based upon fundamentals. Candlesticks are the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling or basically investor sentiment. That's what moves prices. Let me make this smaller. Okay, before we go to the charts, so here's what I'm trading right now is the soybeans. This is a daily chart. If I'm trading intraday, well in this case it was mostly up all day long, um, this is the 10 minute chart. So a lot of times if something's moving around a lot, I'm trying to think of what that might be. Like uh, uh, hogs, you can trade it off the 10 minute chart. Uncle Ben Zimmer. Uh, no, they. I don't think they had the Ica, uh, Ica Chumugu cloud. Okay. If you get an entry trigger and it rises, then creates a legitimate exit signal, so you exit. But it falls back to the T line and then takes off again. Is this just standard, or is there a way to reduce whipsaw? Um, now, you're talking about a what, what if. The other what if is, here's my 10-minute chart. Here's my 10-minute candle. 
I'm just looking to see what it does. It is, is there times where, uh, trying to think of something, I'll try to find one. Are there times when something will open positive, trade positive, and then all of a sudden reverse? Yes. But remember, we're buying based upon the probabilities of what the price movement should do. And that term right there, probabilities, is something you always have to keep in mind. That more than likely, every time I put on a trade, I know I've got an approximately a 70% probability I'm going to make money with that trade. Now that used to really intrigue me. thought, how could you lose if you're making 70% of your trades positive? Well, what I also discovered is there's 30% of the time you better figure out what to do to get out of a bad trade. So that is the process of the old sage advice of cut your losses short, let your profits run. But nobody ever tells you how to cut your losses short, let your profits run. Very simple uh, exit strategies on candlesticks will tell you get out of that bad trade and then move on to something that has better probabilities. And we do that. Uh, that's our stop loss session that we do in our, our uh, members area. Uh, on hogs, the big close below the T-line. Uh, right here. Yeah, that's your bearish engulfing signal. Then it came right back up. So there'll be a lot of times where if I close out, I'll come right back in. Uh, proper risk management, okay. It took, it looked like were. Andrew, I don't know. It looked like were. Huh? You got me there. How many trades do you average per week? Uh, that all depends on what I'm trading, Bruce. If I'm swing trading and I've got 10 positions on in my swing trading account. Maybe I'm doing an average of one trade a day because I'm expecting to hold most of those trades anywhere from three to 10 trading days. If I'm trading hogs, I may have been in and out of this two or three times during the day. I don't hear about the signal enhancements you talk about in your books. Long wicks, body length, no shadow, volume. Do you not consider them? That's all built into the uh, signal, HP. Volume is not a consideration. Volume and price have nothing to do with each other. The only time it does have something to do with each other, I'm trying to think of something where, is if you see, let's see, I'm still looking at a 10 minute chart here. Let's say hypothetically, you see big volume on this day when it does a doji. That just adds a little bit of a, a fluff telling you that's the right, that there's been a lot of change of ownership. And that also goes with the simple analysis the Japanese rice traders provide for us. It says, where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. Where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. And if you see that happening with big volume, it just kind of enhances the fact that the panic sellers got out and the smart money bought. So the other things like the length of the body, yes. That's part of our training. You'll often hear me say that the bigger the signal, the bigger the signal, the more compelling there's been a change of investor sentiment. The bigger the signal, the more there's 
compelling that uh, uh, it looks look like we're out of video today. We're out of video today. I don't know what that means. So let's take a gander at some of the things that uh, uh, let me run through just some of the positioning we have on right now. Well, first of all, we're still long GFI. Gold prices haven't changed. Now, it did do a bearish engulfing signal. Where's our safety stop? Oh, Andrew, yes. If you, uh, if you don't have anything on your screen, go up to the top of the screen. There's a line at the very top that says uh, click on screen sharing. Uh, so we did a bearish engulfing signal, but was the other aspect? They bounced up off the T-line. Where's our safety stop? Just below the uh, T-line. So when we recommend a position, when you want to see confirmation, we were ready to buy. We had recommended this on positive trading today. Well, it opened lower and traded lower. So it kept us out of a trade that wasn't working. And we already showed this one, sample or simple, when it did the bobble breakout, we can expect wave one and wave three to be about the same. So again, this is why we uh, try to find the signals and patterns. Blink, you can see what this one, let me make this smaller. Oops, I guess it didn't really pick up. There's a J-hook fry pan bottom. This one with that little doji gap up telling us they're starting in this direction. This can be bought on positive trading. Expecting wave one, wave two, going into wave three. A bobble breakout. Let me see if I can find another one. A bobble breakout is a J-hook pattern, but with it, you can definitely see it occurring at a level like a a moving average resistance where it first fails, pulls back to the T-line, and then comes back up. I put this one on here because, oops, a bus, no, because this one broke out today, big time. So you can see kind of the fry pan bottom breakout. Now, it also was based upon, I guess, they won a uh, court case against with a Marna. Um, so we bought going into the close, which it still moved up, because this is the type of thing where they could open it up another couple of points uh, tomorrow. Whoops, I don't know what that was. This is a bobble breakout potential. Look at your kicker signal. Opened here, closed here, then gapped up and went the opposite direction. Coming off the 50, where do you think your first likely target is? Yeah, it's up to 735 now. The 200. Well, look what happened when it got to the 200. There was our sell signal, a bearish engulfing signal. But then look what happened. Somebody was asking about what is a left-right combo. This is a left-right combo, a doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal. What else is uh, significant about that left-right combo? It occurred right smack dab on the T-line. Now it's come back up here. So if this opens positive tomorrow, what do we got going on? We got a bobble breakout, which is, you can see where the resistance level was, and you can see where it's breaking out. What do we expect from there? If this is wave one, wave three is going to be much higher. A bobble breakout is merely a J-hook pattern that if you took out this 200-day uh, moving average, you basically just have a, a J-hook pattern. Yes, wave three will usually be the same, uh, same magnitude as wave one. Yeah, I don't know why he's up here near the door. I've got about three acres of front lawn, and he's right here by the front door.
Yep, here he comes back again. Okay, I'm going to go through this real quick so we can get to some strong charts. There's your J hook pattern, Rollins. Uh, we recommended Toll Brothers because there's kind of your bobble breakout, but more, more importantly, there's your fry pan bottom and they broke out through the 200, should be more upside. Pulte home, now this is just simple logic. If you see Toll Brothers, Pulte Homes, Beezer Homes, uh, and a couple other home builders moving up strong, then you can pretty much assume that whole sector is being bought. And so that puts all the stars in alignment. But if the market's moving in a certain direction and you can see a sector moving in a certain direction, then you can go right back to that sector and see which one's uh, 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 see which, which ones in that sector are acting the strongest. We recommended Dix the other day because look, let me make this smaller. Look where our best friend signal is right here. A doji gap up. And where did it gap up? Through this resistance level. So what can we assume now? Wave one, wave two, wave three starting breaking out. Bounced off the 200, broke up through this level. There's probably a lot more upside. At what time do you make these recommendations? Uh, Agio, I put out two or three recommendations every night. Sometimes they go out at 6 o'clock. Sometimes they go out at midnight, all depending on how much energy I've got left. And I put out the recommendations, not so that people have recommendations. That's probably not the right way to say that. We're trying to teach people how to analyze and scan for themselves. When I put out the recommendation, I do it in a two-minute video showing what the uh, uh, what the market's doing and which stocks look the strongest and then explain why those those recommendations are being made. So I always put it in the illustration of the cop standing on the street corner, sees this drunk driving down the street, pulls the guy over, walks up to the uh, car and looks in the back seat and there's a penguin sitting there. And the cop says, what the heck are you doing with a penguin in your back seat? The drunk said, oh, I found him out on the street and I don't know what to do with him. And the cop said, well, take him to the zoo. The drunk said, oh, I didn't think of that. Well, the next day, the cop's standing on the street corner, and there's this drunk weaving down the street, blows his whistle, pulls the guy over, walks up to the car, looks in the back seat, and the penguin's sitting there. He goes, what the heck? I thought I told you to take the penguin to the zoo. The drunk said, I did. He liked it so much. Today, we're going to a baseball game. So if you don't know why you're doing something, it doesn't do you much good. We're trying to teach people to analyze and scan for the best trades themselves so they don't have to depend on anybody else. Um, do you also make recommendations every day? Not every day to options member, maybe once or twice a week, depending on the night. So that uh, the options room, there's about 25, uh, 30 people in there. And that those conversations are much more oriented toward what strategy to put on a, a, a specific price move whether to buy calls or buy a call spread or sell a credit spread or buy, I'm sorry, buy a credit spread. Um, so it's different terminology. So we make that a separate room uh, compared to the main room. Uh, the time, that time frame is we're looking at the, uh, at the daily right now. But if I'm trading intraday, I'm using the 10 minute chart. So anyways, you get two or three recommendations uh, each day in the, uh, in the stock uh, area. And then about once or twice a week, I'll put out a recommendation. We just recommended buying the calls on Dix when we saw this, when it gapped up as a best friend. Uh, I forget what we bought but I think they only had August. So 
the definition of a J-hook pattern. I'll get to that. Uh, the J or the options room is open all the time, just like the regular room. Okay. Uh, PNR was recommended because of this. This is what we call the message. A message is different than a best friend signal. The message is a gap it up, but immediately do a dark candle. But the message was they gap this up. There was a lot of force and profit taking. So what do we wait for? We wait for a signal that tells you the profit taking is over. Then we start buying based upon that message. Uh, Jerry, uh, no. Uh, first of all, we were buying dicks based upon going into wave three with that best friend signal. And notice what it didn't do. It couldn't even close back below the, the T line. Now, if the market was selling off hard tomorrow and it started trading down below this level, yeah, maybe we close it out then. But the fact that they gapped up through a resistance level, you're trading above the T line and you really didn't sell off all that much today. That was just kind of a, remember, every single day of an uptrend is not going to be up. Every single day in a downtrend is not going to be down. It's when you get a confirmed reversal signal that, that it is telling you something. So here was a gap up in SR and E, which backed off today, but notice what it still didn't do. It still didn't close below the T-line, but it still makes our, uh, oh, I bought the uh, August 21st, 44 calls. Thank you, Barbara. Um, this one, but this one has to open positive and trade positive to continue this uptrend. Now, something like Cree, which was also doing a fry pan bottom, has the same scenario. You're in an uptrend. It has to open positive to stay positive on this one. Overstock, we've done very well with this one ever since it broke out through this level. There's your J-hook pattern. Somebody was asking about a J-hook. J-hook is a wave one, a wave two, which is usually indicated support on the T-line, and then it goes into wave three. There's your little J-hook. And the prerequisite for a J-hook is a strong price move. Vivo was another one that had been producing very good profits. But look at our big belt hold bearish engulfing. And then today it closed below the T-line. That told you the party's over. That's where it should have been closed out today. Simple rule of the T-line. You stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. Whoops, I've skipped the market indexes. That's why. So here's what we call a double doji setup. Up move, indecision, pullback, indecision. Now remember, a doji means indecision between the bulls and the bears. Victor, hang on to your individual requests until I tell Jim to do the double line. This makes for a very easy entry. If this opens positive tomorrow, you can start buying. There was another one I thought. This was almost a double doji today. And it backed off. Let me. So the things like FedEx. We put out a buy recommendation on the spreads on FedEx. I, we bought the August one, 70, 175s. Because when it did a doji sandwich breaking out through this level, what can we assume? Wave one. Wave two, wave three being the same magnitude as wave one. Uh, it doesn't matter the color of the, the uh, doji. Remember, a doji body is very small. The relevancy of a doji is the fact that there's price move, but they open close almost at the same level. And it doesn't really matter whether it, it did a little green body or a red body. Does a second doji have to be lower than the first? Not necessarily. Because what is the doji's telling you? 
there's consolidation and decision. Sometimes they're flat. Sometimes they pull back a little bit. Wave one is a large gap up. Yes. So there's nothing you can do about that unless you were you got long in here after the bullish harami. Then you caught that move. Then the next move was right here after it consolidated. And notice where it consolidated to. Just moved absolutely sideways until it hit the T line and then started back up again. So again, I point that out because there's lots of simple, not a lot to so how to, lots of relevant information based upon simple confirming indicators like the T line and what the actual uh, signal is right at the, those levels. Now, as far as the biggies, Amazon, nothing there. There's a bearish doji sandwich closing below. It did a bearish left-right combo up here. That kind of took the wind out of the sails. Then notice what this signal is right here. And this is why I point this out. The Japanese rice traders, after 400 years, gave us about 50 or 60 candlestick signals. Now, out of those 50 or 60, you only need to learn 12 of them, the 12 major signals. And the reason is because they're the ones that occur 99% of the time, and even if something else occurs, that other 1% of the time, probably there's a major signal someplace that you probably want to, to, to be trading. The of a, knowing what the signal is or what a signal isn't, or what isn't a signal. Notice that this is not a kicker signal, not a bullish engulfing. This is just an up day. So we've got a strong sell signal pulls back, tries to come back up, but that lack of a reversal signal gave us a little bit more warning that you probably didn't want to do anything until there was more uh, more evidence. And as you can see, right now there's nothing going on. The T-line is the eight exponential moving average. Isn't the big green can on Amazon a potential J-hook? Uh, yeah, but it's a potential, meaning you probably, in this case, without it being a signal, just be a little bit more attentive. And then the fact that today, they when they closed it back below, not only the T-line, but below the halfway point of the candle that told us maybe the bulls are in control, that means the bears are still in control. The little green line right here is the 3T line, which becomes more relevant the further away you move from the T line, and it adds as an additional confirmation that if the 3T line comes down through the T line, as well as the candlestick signal, that's more confirmation that the uh, something has changed. Uh, most every single needs confirmation the next day. The only one that really doesn't is the left-right combo. That's so powerful that if you see a left-right combo and you still haven't closed below the T-line, you close it out anyways. Is this a reverse slash upside down doji sandwich? Yes. Not an upside down. It's a bearish doji sandwich. So that's, and what do we expect from a doji sandwich? More downside. Apple, bearish doji sandwich. Looking for to see if it's going to hit the 34 or come all the way back to the 50. Netflix hasn't been able to get out of its own way now for a while. Look at your big dark cloud. Then they close below the T-line. Just one very simple factor about the T-line. If you see a sell signal to close below the T-line, the probabilities are extremely strong that you're going to be in a downtrend. You could short a AMZ, Amazon, on weakness tomorrow. If we wake up and they show the pre-market futures for the Dow is down another 150, 
meaning they're still selling off the markets, yeah, you could probably start shorting some of these. NVIDIA, another one that did, uh, you can see the bearish engulfing right here, never got back up above that level and another sell signal closing below the T-line. What's that telling you? The bears have started to take control. Does the right left left right combo at the bottom knee confirmation? No. If I'm short and I see a bullish left right combo, close out the position immediately. Now, my, I might not jump in until I see confirmation that the bulls have taken control. Remember, hold on to your individual requests until we get until I tell Jim to do the double line. Okay, so here's some that are good looking charts. Look at your kind of your bobble breakout, fry pan bottom, best friend signal on EQT. If this one starts trading higher, you can be buying this one. Because your J hook pattern it would be in in progress. IBIO another one. Notice the slow fry pan bottom, little gap up. This is information that tells you there's something new now in this uh, stock. Notice for months, we could probably even go back further. But for months, this one, oh, Shazam. Well, for crying out loud, I can't get, stay, I did it again. I'm the type that doesn't like to make, dang! Am I drunk or what? There, here you got a big fry pan bottom, got a J hook pattern, and apparently already illustrated that it broke out from that level. That's what we're looking for on these fry pan bottoms. Yeah, I need that darn penguin, that's right. Um, yeah, it's a good fur piece away from the uh, T line right now, so but look at the pattern that it's doing. It's doing a potential J hook. And what would confirm the J hook? Remember our doji rule. The price will usually be uh, will move in the direction how they open after a doji. So if this opened positive tomorrow and you were an aggressive trader, you could be buying, and then you just set your stop back below this level. But it shouldn't open up and then come back down through there. It should be going in this direction. Uh, the uh, three, yeah, the three T line, the three exponential moving average. This is your potential bobble breakout. Notice how they came up, failed again at the 200. Look where they pulled back to, right back to the T line. Now there's your little left-right combo after a doji gap up. This one can be bought on positive trading because now look what you got. Kind of a fry pan bottom with your dimple right here. That would suggest there's more upside. Uh, Codex was another one that everybody in the chat rooms, I say everybody, a lot of people in the chat room have been watching. Another one that had the slow curve bounce right off the 50 now broken out through this level. So you stay long until you see a sell signal. IMRN. Bah. IMRN. Same scenario. This told you something. There's a new dynamic. Now they've pulled it back and this is told you, blip, this is telling you that the uh, Selling may have stopped. Now you get ready to buy on this J hook type pattern. Can you show me the left right combo where you get out again? That would be a bearish left right combo. I'll have to find one. What did I just do? I am on N. Right. This is what allows us to get into positions right at the appropriate time. 
fry pan bottom right here at the 200. What's everybody watching? They're all watching the 200. If it opens positive, we don't have to, we don't have that fear or less fear that it's going to open and immediately go the opposite direction. We know that there's, if they open a positive breaking out through this level, we want to be buying because that's where everybody else will start coming in. That's a bullish left-right combo. I don't see a bearish left-right combo. Uh, Richard, go up to the uh, little red X to the top right of your screen. Click on it, log yourself out, and log back in. Hopefully you'll get a better uh, uh, connection. It's usually the server that creates the problem. Same scenario on HLIT. Look what happened when they came up through the 50. That was your fry pan bottom breakout area. Was this? No, that was a failure. That was where, even if you had bought this on this day, on the kicker signal, when it came back down through this level, it wasn't confirming, close it out. So that trade or that chart right now, you just stay away from. There's nothing there. I usually don't look at things like this, but look what happened on Whirlpool. Right here at the breakout. There's your fry pan bottom. There's your, this is what we call your classic pattern. Fry pan bottom followed by a J-hook pattern. And look what happened here in the breakout area. They gapped it up, which apparently it was good earnings. Everybody's home doing laundry. And here's kind of your slow curve. Look at your doji sandwich. Remember, this is the, one of the uh, signals or patterns that produce extremely high probabilities. Meaning, if we see this setup right here, stochastic still coming up, that if it opens positive, we can expect this day to be approximately the same magnitude as this day right here. And this is Granger. This is why when you know what the nature or the characteristic of each signal is, they pop this up. There's your doji sandwich breakout. They pop this up, filled this gap, basically, I think. Yep, filled that gap. But look at the nature of the consolidation. Indecision, 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 indecision. What's that tell you about the force of the sellers? It's not there. Now what do we have? Wave one, wave two, gap up best friend, wave three, probably more upside. And I'm suspecting that was based upon on uh, good earnings. So things like Tupperware. Somebody has been following this in the chat room. Look at your left-right combo, doji followed by a bullish engulfing, right smack dab off the 34, followed by a doji sandwich. And this is a very relevant entry point. If you see a doji sitting right smack dab on a potential resistance level like the T-line, what do we know about the doji? It's going to move in the direction of how they open after a doji. If they open a positive, what can we anticipate? This day right here is going to be the same magnitude as this day right here. What's that tell us about the T-line? It's not acting as resistance. What's it telling us about this breakout area? It's now a breakout. How long do you hold on to this position? There's a T-line crunch right up through the 200. All you do is hang on to this until you see a sell signal. This is not rocket science. This is just a simple analysis that the Japanese race traders have provided for us over hundreds of years of them not only testing 
but using these signals to make fortunes in the most boringest of all commodities, rice. Uh, Dylan, it is easy. I mean, I was the worst investor in the world. I was even a stockbroker for eight years. I got out of the business because I realized that the brokerage firms had no more idea about what moved prices than anybody else. Even the same works in daily chart. Even the same works in, yes, on intraday charts. So you can see where this one coming out of the fry pan bottom is broken out. Now, could I have traded this today? Well, there's the 10-minute chart. Came up, pulled back, and maybe I'll take profits, then I'm buying back in, as long as it stays above the T-line. Oh, no, Max, uh, D-Max, I, uh, I was so bad that I would, I would make sure that the Mistakes that I did, I had down pat. I would make them over and over just to make sure I got them all right. Whoops, we're on the 10-minute chart. That's why I can't figure this out. There you go again. Gap up. Gap up through the resistance level. Fry pan bottom with kind of a double bottom. What's anticipated? More upside. I know. Look where this broke out. Make this even smaller. So when it breaks out of a wave one, wave two sideways, going into wave three, what's that tell you? That tells you you're now in the next wave to the upside. And C-U-T-R. There's your fry pan bottom. And notice what started your uptrend. That little gap up went right through the T-line. Or I'm sorry, through the 50. This is what we call a T-line crunch. Notice how they couldn't come back below the T-line at all. They pushed it right up through that resistance level. Where do you think the next likely target is going to be? There's kind of your trend channel. Do you use a TTN? Uh, I wouldn't know a TTN. Well, like in a Bollinger Band? Trade the markets. Well, that's kind of the philosophy of the Japanese rice traders, is let the market tell you what the market is doing. I still didn't get to the indexes, did I? So this is what our indexes told us today. That we had a J-hook potential, but they demolished that, or the, they, me in the market, demolished that by coming back down through that level and closed right here on the T-line. Doesn't say that it's a full-scale reversal to the closed on the T-line. Need to see how it opens tomorrow. The more relevant indicator was the NASDAQ that did do the bearish doji sandwich that closed below the T-line. Yeah, I forget. I think we've had John on here a while back. Uh, you can also use the Bollinger Bands when the Bollinger Bands start squeezing. Um, no, not necessarily. Samid, so, uh, remember, uh, there's a T-line rule. So you stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line with the caveat that the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability it's going to come back and test it. So we have a new or different trading strategy. 
if you were long, 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 where do, where do most people buy? They start buying exuberantly at the top. Your stochastic's up here in the overbought area. Now what are we watching? Big buying. Gap up. Big buying. Um, oh, that's right. Laid the gym off and... Uh, Um, so what do you do when you know you're too far away from the T-line? You know it's probably going to come back and test it. So when you know that you're that far away from the T-line, we just flip to the 10-minute chart and see what the 10-minute chart is doing. So anytime you start moving too far away from the T-line, get ready to take profits. That's probably more... I'm going to say, it's probably a, a, the most effective indicator that I've ever come across in the last 40-some odd years of trading, the T-line. And that was brought to me by one of my first private training students, Rick Sadler, who now runs uh, Hit and Run Candlesticks. He was the one that, uh, after coming down and doing two and a half days in front of the computer, loved candles, candlesticks. And about six weeks later, he called, hey, he said, take a look at this eight exponential move in average. And so this is the nice thing about candlestick charts. We know that the signals work, or they wouldn't be around after 400 years. So if somebody says, try the XYZ indicator, you can throw it on there. If it helps you, keep it there. If it doesn't, take it back off. You can see my charts are relatively simple. That's because the most important factor is the signal itself. NASDAQ not in the overbought area, correct. That's Tesla. So you're down here, but what do you got going on up here? What again, what's the most important factor? Bearish engulfing signal. Bearish doji sandwich, stochastics heading down. What's the implication? The bears are starting to take control. If three T line crosses the T line, is it enough to jump in a trade or is it? It's not necessary. It's just kind of a confirming fluffy indicator. So look how the three T line hasn't closed below the T line even after the sell signal. Now you have to wait to see, and that's also going to be a function of the market itself. If the uh, NASDAQ starts trading down tomorrow, obviously the 3T line is going to come, uh, come down. Are we near a full market reversal when my brothers ask if they should buy? Oh, we are. Okay, that's probably true. Yeah, uh, I was mentioning that somebody was talking about they just passed such and such a beach, which was up in Oregon or someplace. And I said, well, I just talked with my brother. He was down on, on Daytona Beach. And somebody said, well, does your brother trade? And I said, I haven't been able to teach him how to use candlesticks because he's really not that interested. But I use my brother as an Indian. When he's ready to buy, I know that's time to start looking to take some profits. Do you trade after hours? No. I want to see what everybody's doing. What would indicate that we're near a full scale? If, if we started seeing, uh, well, not a full scale reversal, but if they start trading us off, we can maybe expect it to come back to this level, the bottom of the channel. Cannon Beach. Okay, that's right. Okay. So, not only do they the signals work well on the uh, bullish side, they work just as well on the bearish side. So, here is uh, uh, Ballard Power. Again, there's the doji. You can see how they had a bearish left-right combo, a bearish left-right combo. 
where's the next likely target? If this opens lower, I would suspect they're eventually going to the 200-day or the 50-day moving average. Tesla doing a full bearish in golfing. Very rarely seen. I don't think it's rare. It does, whoops, it does sell signals like right there. There's your doji gap up. There was your doji gap up. So it does the same, same signals as anything else. All right, I guess that's about all I've got. Uh, somebody doing a private message. Um, the, uh, the whole point of uh, Saturday is to identify these strong potential price moves. So what we're going to be doing is kind of concentrating on not just the signals themselves, but the signals combinations that produce extremely uh, powerful moves. And I keep coming back to this one because we're still in it. But that little best friend gap up breaking through this level, this is the type we like to get stuck in because there's no analysis here. There was a bearish engulfing signal. So what's our basic rule? We need to see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. The next day I opened positive, didn't have to worry about it. There's a bearish engulfing signal. What's our rule? If this closes below the T-line, it's time to close out the position. Okay. All right, so are there any general questions on candlesticks? The reason I kept going with candlesticks was two, two basic premises. One, there's a simple rule on Wall Street that if something doesn't work, it disappears very quickly. Japanese candlesticks have been around for 400 years. So a lot of people say, well, why doesn't everybody use them? It's not that they've been hidden. Nobody just has known about them until a couple of decades ago. And secondly, the thing that kept me interested in candlesticks was everything I kept candlesticks or learning, the first thought that went in my head is, yeah, that makes sense. So candlesticks is just a... Uh, a, uh, a graphic depiction of the common sense perspectives of investors. What is a flutter kicker? I don't remember seeing one, but it's a kicker signal that I don't remember when the last one, I'll have to find one, but it's a bearish candle. The next day they gap up and do a doji above the open. Then we know the doji rule. It's going to move in the direction of how they open after a doji. So if they open it positive, we know they're going to trade positive, which means it's going to create a green candle. So you've got a dark candle with a gap up doji and then a positive trading after that, that if you took out that little doji, the flutter, you basically have a kicker signal. Uh, Julio, yes, you'll get the uh, Oh, that's one thing I was telling the chat room today, that you're going to get a lot more information than just what we got there in the uh, room. More than likely, as we go through hundreds and hundreds of charts, again, most of this is just visual recognition. So it's not like you have to sit there and learn formulas or learn uh, techniques. All you have to do is recognize the signal that's giving you a strong reversal. But there'll be a lot of times where we'll go through the PowerPoints and we may go through 8, 10 fry pan bottom breakouts, where to buy, the different levels to buy, where to get out. But there might be another 15 
charts that we're not even going to go through. We're just going to skip those or go through them real quick so that afterwards you can have the uh, PowerPoint sent to you and then you can go through them as fast or as slow as you want to. How far above the T-line if you can put it in percentage, can't put it in percentage, would you generally say consider target profit taking? Just visually, when you can see that you're moving relatively too far away from the T-line, from what it normally does, it's likely to come back to the T-line. So there's no percentage. It's just visually saying, hey, this is starting to move too far away from where it normally trades. I would suspect it's coming back to test it. Is Roku forming a wedge? Not really. It's just moving sideways. Chegg is still above the T-line. Uh, but you do have a bearish left-right combo. And look where the bearish left-right combo occurred. Obviously at a level that they couldn't get through. Makes this very simple. If this opens lower tomorrow, you close out the position immediately. Bah. Same scenario. You've had a hanging man Harami, a doji, a bearish left-right combo, stochastics rolling over. I'd probably close it out on weakness tomorrow. Okay, Jim, just go ahead and do the double line since everybody is throwing in their requests. And in 2.8 seconds, do the next double line. I don't even think you put in the... Oh, there it is. I thought you missed it. All right. All right. Everybody's got to slow down or I can't even see what we're... Yep, you scrolled past me already. ANF, nothing wildly exciting. Not a reversal, just an uh, uptrend. I'd be trading something else. Lenar, slow uptrend. You can stay with it as long as it stays above the T line. Silver and silver stocks have been doing extremely well. However, you are probably well above... Okay, thanks, Gary. Um, observe the obvious. Does this look familiar? Exuberance, exuberance. Hanging man doji. I'd probably put a safety stop right here. You can see what that looks like. Bah humbug. How come I keep missing? Same thing right there. Exuberance at the top. And the GDX still moving up steadily. You just stay long. Don't let it close back below the T-line. Oh, let's see. Uh, somebody's asking for the uh, the uh, link for Saturday. Becky, if you could throw it back in again. Thank you. B Cove. Yes. Now, if this opens lower and you are long and starts trading down, you close it out immediately. Then you can buy it back if it comes back up through this level. So you definitely need to see this open positive and trade positive. INO was in a wedge, and today it kind of came down through the bottom, and we're getting close to the bottom of the wedge. So you can see how there's a wedge. It was looking definitely looking for this to break to the upside. I own some calls on that, and I'll just hang on to it until it breaks out of the point of that wedge one way or the other. Ovid. You shouldn't be in this. If you're in it, you should be short. With it closing below the T-line and not getting back up, you shouldn't be in this. 
You should have your money someplace else. Well, for crying out loud, my fingers must be getting fatter. That one has to stay above the uh, the T line. So you need to see how that one opens tomorrow. Doby, that's a good bullish chart. You stay long. And Goog, that one you should have been out of today. I wouldn't necessarily short it, but it wouldn't be long right now. And Match, that one, if you're short, you stay short. But that would have been a toughie to short because look at your bullish engulfing right off the 50. If I'd been short, I would have covered it on that day. I don't know whether I would have gotten back in the short, so that would have meant I wouldn't be long or short this one. Other than if you are sh short, you stay short. This one, I don't know what you do with this one. I'd stay away from it until it figures out what it wants to do. VFF had a good chart. It broke out, but it still hasn't closed below the T-line. If you're long, you stay long. Use the T-line as your stop. We did silver. Again, silver. Get ready to start taking profits. You've moved way too far away from the, uh, the T-line. And VIAV, you stay long. You can see how the T-line crunch. What time during the day do you normally enter a pre-scan trade. Usually 80% of my trades are done within the first 45 minutes of the uh, trading day. And that's usually a function of how the market is opening. And then probably 10% of or 15% of the trades, if it's not working, I close them out at the end of the day, last 20 minutes of the day. And maybe 5% of the time, if I see something moving big during the day, I'll jump in then, but most of my trades are, are at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day. Lift. Stay long, but it has to open positive. I'd use today's low as a uh, stop. Netty, just stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Tech. Morning star signal. This usually indicates a scoop type pattern. You can buy this one on positive trading. That's where the little slingshot effect usually will take place. Micron, eh, you look where you are. You're right there. So that had the prospect of breaking out, but closed right at this level. You can buy on positive trading. If it opens lower and you're long, I'd probably close it out because that means you're still stuck sideways. That was your little gap up. Another one with the left-right combo. If you didn't close it out, you get ready to close this out if it opens weaker tomorrow. Honeywell, stay long, but you can see it's rolling over. There's your shooting star, a little shooting star doji, spinning top. I'd have a safety stop just below the T-line. Patel. Just stay long. You're in the overbought area, so this is where I start moving my safety stops up to the previous day's open. OPK, another one that you definitely want to see this open positive. If it opens lower tomorrow, it means they're still drifting back toward the T-line. So, Goo. Oh, Robert, that's a lap. So go. Now, this one had the prospect of a best friend signal, but it didn't open properly, so it didn't execute. You shouldn't be long or short this one. If you get a gap up doji in an uptrend above the T-line, but it but not in overbought, would you still exit using doji rule? If you get a gap up doji in uptrend above the T-line, but not in overbought, do you still exit using the doji rule 
If it, now, I'll give it a little bit more time. If it's not in the overbought condition, like right there, I'm going to give it time. But if it's up here, yeah, I'm probably going to be more apt to get ready to close out the position. So again, a signal is not a signal if it's not occurring in the correct condition of the uh, trend. A candlestick buy signal in the overbought area doesn't mean anything. A candlestick sell signal in the oversold area doesn't mean anything. They have to have to be occurring in the right conditions of the market. Gush, slow, steady uptrend. You stay long as long as it stays uh, above the T-line. Missed. Big gap up. This watch, you watch to see how this one opens tomorrow. If it opens positive, that means eventually they're probably heading for the 200-day moving average. SPWR, you stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Southwest, ah, nothing. That's a wedge. I wouldn't be long or short. AUI, another one where it needs to stay above the T-line, another gold stock. And SABR, flat as a pancake. I wouldn't be long or short. Let's see if, if we can make it more intriguing. Nope, still wouldn't be long or short. I'd move my money someplace else. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. This one, not very exciting. Citigroup is an institutional trader. It's in a fry pan bottom. You do have a McMuffin, a Morning Star signal followed by a Doji sandwich. You can buy this one if it gets up through the breakout area. So you can buy this one on strength. And Matador did kind of a double Doji. It has to open positive. If it opens lower, close out the position. NTR. Nothing. I'd be someplace else. Just no energy in that one. Can. That one after your big shooting star, failure at the 50, followed by a bearish engulfing, I would have closed it out today. There's nothing there. And ADAP. ADAP, you stay long as long as it doesn't close below the T-line. You had your left-right combo, doji, doji, doji. Now you use the T-line, uh, your final criteria. XHB, looks like a fry pan bottom breakout right about in here. You stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Surgery had a, uh, whoops. Had that held right here at the uh, T-line, fry pan bottom. You're right up here at the breakout level. If this opens positive, you can even still be buying this one. WNDW, David, that doesn't work. This one you can get ready to go short. If it opens lower tomorrow, you can see how the failure at the T-line, if it breaks this level or it comes down through today's low, that's a good prospect they're coming down to the 200-day moving average. Uh, all right. Um, I don't even know how to bring up the New York Stock Exchange down here. RLGT. This one, if it opens lower tomorrow, you close it out because it's having trouble getting through that level. And V-Ray. 
nothing wildly exciting, but you can see it used the T-line as a support. You stay with it. Pork. You stay with this. There's that bullish doji sandwich. There's your little kicker type signal. Break out. Break out. Fill this little gap. You stay long until you see a sell signal. J.B. Hunt. Well, well, well. J.B.H.T. Look at the pullback, pretty indecisive. But again, where did the selling start? When you saw that doji gap up in the overbought condition away from the T-line, when it opened lower, the doji rule told you to take profits. Now you can watch to see what it does here. Again, the doji rule. If it opens positive, look for your J-hook pattern. f sly, you should be out of this. I wouldn't be long or short this one right now. D-Dog, this one you can possibly be going short on weakness tomorrow. Planet Fitness has been weak for a while. And here's a very important analysis. Look at your best friend signal. Then the next day they gapped it back down below the open of the candle that told us the bulls were in control. That told you to get out of that position immediately. Same scenario we saw not too long ago over here on American. Big gap up, but then they opened lower and closed back down here. That told you there was nothing there. You close out the position immediately. INOV broke out. Best friend. Look for more upside. We did cork. Yeah. REXR, nothing great here. That's a sideways chart. Even though you've got bullish, you can buy it if you like it. It's just a chart that I wouldn't trade at all. There's there's nothing there. Bcove, buy on positive trading. I think you probably want VEEV. Uh, this one has to open positive tomorrow to stay in it. Trade desk. This one you can get short on the Barry Stoji sandwich on uh, a lower open tomorrow. Pinnacle. You stay long, still use the T-line as your stop. We did surgery. BOXL. That one you can get ready to buy. Look at your left-right combo right here on the T-line telling you the profit taking is over. Now look for the potential of J-hook pattern. VFAC. That's not working, JB. Uh, this one you can buy. Just be careful. Looks like a little slow curve. The profit taking is over. Let's get this out of the way. So if you're buying on strength tomorrow, use the T-line as your stop. Oh, Julio, that looks like a lap. You were looking for stamp. I pan bottom, you stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. ADMP. Another one that if you want to buy this, I'd use today's open. It needs to come up in that direction. I would probably use yesterday's open as a stop. If it comes back down through there, they aren't going anywhere with this one. BE, we were recommending buying this if it opened positive today, which it didn't. You can still buy it if it comes back up through this level. You're still in an uptrend. AIG, not very exciting. It has to open positive. Ego, 
another one that has to open positive and stay above the uh, T-line. OMI, stay long on this one. The big breakout. So this one is where I would have closed this one out right here, but I would have bought back if it came back up through that level. Told me the bulls are still there after the profit taking. AMZ, no, nah, that's not working. MYCH, is this uh, fool the typist? What does Apple from today? What does Apple from today? Uh, it looks like if they open it lower, they could take it to the 34. Is opening positive when a stock opens above the previous close or previous high? Previous close. And that you're not seeing that the market's opening up down 200 points. You want to see the markets maintaining and uh, uh, Yeah, you want to see the market maintaining. Um, what one was Dylan? Look at how we did silver. Were you trying to do match? Match, you stay short. Dollar General. Uh, that one failed here at the breakout level. If this opens lower, close it out. I wouldn't be long or short then. Boeing, kind of the same thing. It's really not moving in any direction. It would not be long or short. And AUY has to open positive. Silver, we did. Foot Locker, that one's still got a, your best friend signal. You could be buying this one. Here's another case where it gapped up, it didn't execute, so that became your buy point when it came up through that level. AYX. Nothing unless you're going short. No direction on that one. Docu, same scenario. If you're long, it has to open positive tomorrow. A McMuffin is a doji or a, uh, a morning star signal followed by a morning star signal followed by a doji sandwich or your morning sandwich, a McMuffin. If the morning star signal is a major, it's one of the 12 major signals, implies on positive confirmation more upside. A doji sandwich implies more upside. So when you combine the two, it gives you that much stronger uh, credibility that the uptrend has started. So new, all you can do is stay strong or stay long, but you do have a doji, doji, put your safety stop just below today's low. Workhorse. Oh, W-K-H-S, nothing, would not be long or short right now. Again, notice where this ended. When they gapped it up, look how far away you are from the T-line. Next day they did a bearish and golfing. This is not unusual that you have a big run up, you finally hit the sellers, then it will go flat for a while. You just stay away from it until you see the next buy signal. You use 200 SMA as a, and, uh, yes, we don't use it as a support and resistance level. The 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average is on every money manager's chart around the world. They're all making their decisions at those levels. 
we with graphics of candlesticks can see what those decisions are. So it's not like we're using them. We're using them to see what everybody else is doing making their decisions. Pod, yes, you can go short. That's your dumpling top. So where does the uh, fry pan bottom, the opposite of a dumpling top, usually break out? When it's up in the overbought area. Where does a, a, uh, oh, a uh, you know, dumpling top break down? Usually when you're already down here in the oversold condition. All right, Cena. Again, a gap up. Look how far away you are from the T line. Where's your safety stop? Right here. If it trades back below that level, they're coming back to the T line. All right, Diane. P P L T. Here's your bearish harami, that far away from the T-line, your safety stop right now is at today's low. AER, nothing, sideways. IMMU, another bearish doji sandwich. If you're long, it has to open positive tomorrow. And neighbors. That when you stay long, that's still a good looking chart. Uh, where's my mouse? There it is. F. V A C. Oh, Pasha. Let's see. F V A C. Nope. T Doc. Get ready to close this out if it opens weaker tomorrow. I N O is still at the point of this wedge but showing a little bit of weakness. Um, it needs to break out through the top of that wedge. Seal, it has to stay above the T-line to stay in it. Fitbit, that's a J-hook pattern possibility. You can buy this one on positive trading. Bought by Google a few months ago. Apparently not. Maybe they bought a percentage of it. And space. Stay long, but you've seen a long-legged spinning top. I would probably use yesterday's open. But if it came down through there, it's coming back to the T-line. Take profits. Team, eh. If this opens lower to close it out, I wouldn't be long or short. You can see how it kind of failed up here. No, T, I'm sending you the cat. Okay, everybody. Guess that's about it. The only big one we're looking for tomorrow is a bus. Still trading up after hours, I hope. That this is the type that could move right up to 10 or 12 very quickly. Okay, everybody, have a good evening. We will see you bright and early in the chat room.